The movie is set in a city in Argentina where the crime rate is at an all-time high. Ciro is a low-class thug who cannot help but become greedy when he sees an expensive-looking SUV parked in the middle of a quiet street. He breaks into the vehicle with practiced ease and immediately starts removing the stereo. He puts the small stereo inside his bag before searching through all the compartments of the car. He finds nothing else but a pair of sunglasses, however, Ciro is satisfied with his loot. He glances at the backseat of the car and decides to leave the owner a little present. Unzipping his pants, he sprays his DNA at the entire backseat with a pleased chuckle. With all his tasks complete, he then attempts to make a swift escape from the scene of the crime, but to his surprise, he finds that the door he entered through is now locked. He fiddles with the door, but it is sealed firmly. He then tries the rest of the doors, but all of them refuse to budge. Ciro starts to panic amidst the aroma of his trouser snake fluids. He tries to kick through the windows of the car, but they too end up being robust. Again, he tries to open the trunk, but to no avail. He then finds a tire lever, and with the help of this force multiplier, he hits the windows with all his strength, but even so, his attempts bear no fruit. Getting increasingly desperate, Ciro rips off the panel of one of the doors and sticks his arm in to fiddle with the door mechanism, but he only manages to injure himself with a deep scratch. In a last-ditch attempt, he pulls out his gun from his backpack and fires at the windshield, but it ricochets and hits Ciro's leg instead. He screams in pain as he clutches his leg, and to his astonishment, the bullet did not make a single scratch on the glass. He immediately takes off his shirt and wraps it tightly around his leg in order to stop the bleeding. With the situation getting more hopeless by the minute, he sees a passerby woman and screams at her to notice him, but as she fixes her makeup against the car window, she is unable to see Ciro or hear his screams for help. Suddenly, Ciro remembers his cell phone and hurriedly calls a number, but almost instantly, the phone powers off due to running out of battery. Feeling completely pissed off and beaten down, Ciro cries out in frustration. The day soon turns to night, and his injured leg is now more painful than ever. With no one else other than a tiny cricket for company, Ciro falls asleep while clutching his leg. He wakes up the next morning feeling severely dehydrated. He attempts to wet his mouth by sucking the few remaining drops from a soda bottle, but it is far from enough, so he then licks the condensation off the window. With nothing else to do, he fixes the stereo back into the car and plays some music in order to cheer himself up. Gaining some willpower, he then scoots back to the pissed Senate back seat again and continues his futile attempt to force open the door. And the device displays an incoming call. Curiously, Ciro answers the call and discovers that it is from the owner of the SUV, Dr. Enrique. He calmly explains that he is an old man who has been robbed a total of 28 times in all his life, 29 including Ciro's attempt. He does not let Ciro interrupt his words and continues on to reveal all the measures he has taken to secure the car. The car is controlled remotely by the doctor and it is bulletproof and soundproof with the windows fully polarized so that no one can see inside. The only thing that is not bulletproof is the gas tank, which is filled to its full capacity, so it would be very easy for Dr. Enrique to make it explode with a loud boom, in case Ciro decides to get defiant. Enraged by his threats, Ciro's temper explodes, and he vows to take revenge against the doctor once he manages to get outside the car. He viciously threatens him and his entire family, but the call suddenly cuts off, leaving Ciro boiling with rage. A while later, the AC suddenly starts blasting off cool air. It feels nice to experience the cold in the hot midday, but soon the temperature goes to an unreasonable low. Ciro tries to turn off the AC, but it is controlled remotely by the doctor, so he is unable to do anything. As the temperature drops rapidly, Ciro clumsily blocks all the vents and covers himself with the same mats that he probably pissed on earlier, but it is still not enough to stop the biting chill. Thankfully, the AC stops after a while as Dr. Enrique makes a call again. He asks if Ciro has learned his lesson. 
Desperate for some water, Ciro accepts his crimes and begs the doctor to let him out. But Dr. Enrique calmly goes on to narrate a story of his past where his daughter was robbed. As the call ends, Ciro spots a police car slowly stopping in front of the SUV. Discovering a ray of hope, he immediately starts shouting and banging on the doors to get the policemen to notice him. But all the policeman does is give the car a ticket for having a polarized windshield and then calmly drives off. Ciro loses the will to struggle and reclines back on the driver's seat when he gets a call from Dr. Enrique again. He asks for his full name and ID number and in return reveals the only source of water inside the car. Hearing the information, Ciro immediately dives to the back seat and starts to rip off the panels leading him to find the wash hose. The water from the hose is soapy and barely fills half a bottle, but still, Ciro is very grateful to be able to drink it. With his thirst somewhat under control, Ciro's next set of worries include hunger and his badly injured leg. Due to the gunshot wound, Ciro is suffering from a high fever when the doctor calls again. He raises the temperature of the car to the extreme as he begins to describe his own medical condition that gives him a year to live at most. An unknown amount of time passes by, with Ciro's situation getting only worse as he listens to Dr. Enrique's frequent calls where he describes the robberies that he has experienced. Ciro feels he's about to grow crazy from hunger, so much so that he rips off a page from a book and proceeds to eat it, and then quenches his thirst by, uh, recycling his urine. A long time after, when a fellow thief approaches the car and attempts to pry it open, Ciro feels a new hope blooming in his heart. But his hope is instantly broken when some passers-by are like piss off to the thief and hand him over to the police. That night, while desperate from hunger, Ciro catches the lone cricket inside the car. But he cannot bear to eat the only living being that has been keeping him company. Come next morning, Dr. Enrique claims to be in a good mood, so he reveals that there is a chocolate bar behind the brakes. Ciro immediately gets to devouring the food and gets a small sense of relief. With nothing to do, he sets the battery of his phone in the sun and watches over the people passing by while fantasizing about robbing them. That day, through his continuous efforts to open the door, Ciro manages to scratch a tiny hole through the car door. He yells through the hole with all his might, but it is much too small for the people outside to be able to hear his voice. He again gets a call from Dr. Enrique, who talks about his visit to Ciro's house, where he met his wife and son. Ciro is worried that he might have done something against his family, but to his surprise, Dr. Enrique reveals that he gave a large sum of money to his wife. It was under the pretense that Ciro won a lottery. He believes that Ciro is unworthy of his family as he starts reciting his criminal record where Ciro is responsible for multiple murders. Tears stream down his face as he realizes that Dr. Enrique has full intention to keep him prisoner and keep punishing him for a long time. That night, while playing around with the car controls, the car suddenly comes alive. Ciro immediately seizes this chance and drives backwards, intentionally getting into a car crash. As the bags pop to cushion his head, Ciro sees the back window is now broken open. After successfully crawling out of the opening, he stumbles down the road and gets to the nearest food store. Without caring for anything, he instantly starts wolfing down a burger when a security guard comes in to confront him. Enraged that someone is interrupting his long-awaited meal, he shoots the guard. Ciro jolts awake inside the car only to realize that it was all just a dream. Feeling beyond hopeless, he slowly brings his gun to his head, but before he could pull the trigger, he gets a call from Dr. Enrique again. He sets down the gun to accept the call and then begs the doctor to let him see his son. When his request is denied, he threatens to take his own life, but as he pulls the trigger, he miserably finds the gun jammed. Suddenly, the car's headlights automatically turn on to reveal Dr. Enrique standing right in front of the vehicle. He easily opens the door that Ciro has poured blood, piss, and tears to open and enters to sit next to him. 
He is entirely too casual about the whole situation, but Ciro is in no condition to curse him out or even complain. The doctor gets a call from one of his patients and he engages in the conversation, completely ignoring Ciro. Taking advantage of his distraction, Ciro moves quickly to shoot Dr. Enrique and successfully manages to escape the car at last. As he drags his weakened body through the streets, he fires his gun at the sky to alert the neighborhood into calling for help. But Dr. Enrique, who actually evaded the shot, manages to catch up to him and tries to drag him back to the car once again. However, he is intercepted by a policewoman who points her gun at him. Soon after, the police force arrives and the common civilians also gather around. Even in the face of the police, Dr. Enrique refuses to let Ciro go as he keeps him hostage by the car. As the situation has escalated to a public standoff, the police resort to call a retired negotiator by the name of Julio to reason with Dr. Enrique. Julio soon realizes that Dr. Enrique has nothing to lose and that's why he has the courage to face off against anyone. The doctor wants to execute justice with his own hands and kill Ciro as punishment, but Julio tries to reason that Ciro has already faced enough punishment. However, his words have no effect on Dr. Enrique and the public sentiment is still in support of him. However, Julio is not done with his speech. He slowly steps forward and begins to describe his own life story. He has no children, his wife is dead, and all he has to miss are the beers inside his fridge. Julio understands his pain. He also understands that Dr. Enrique would not want his daughter to remember him as a murderer. With the mention of his daughter, Dr. Enrique's entire demeanor changes. He listens to the people screaming around him, some urging him to kill Ciro, some pleading to release him. Dr. Enrique realizes that this is not how he wants to be remembered. To everyone's surprise, he releases Ciro, who immediately rushes to the police and is put in handcuffs. But Dr. Enrique himself gets back inside his SUV with a smile, despite Julio pleading not to. Opening the window halfway, he sticks out his hand and puts his phone on top of the car. The phone screen displays a countdown and Julio quickly realizes that it is a countdown for a bomb. He yells at everyone to get back and they hurriedly get away from the car. Immediately after, a loud boom resonates through the air as the SUV goes up in flames and Dr. Enrique, who is still inside the car, is burned to death. After a five hour long standoff, there is now piss, I mean peace. Neither the police nor the onlookers expected this conclusion. Ciro, who is now arrested inside the police car, is even more shocked by the turn of events. The movie ends as the aftermath of this case is revealed. The news of Dr. Enrique is spread all over by the media talking about his conviction of enacting justice. Ciro is also mentioned to be waiting for his trial after undergoing treatment. And that's a wrap for this movie recap. Thanks for watching.